Hello, everyone, and welcome back to block party number 67. This is our 67th 24 hour collective intelligence block party. So happy and honored to have everyone here. And we are very blessed to be joined by Vincent. I'm going to mute the folks who aren't muted. Uh, I'll ask everyone to mute themselves if they can. Otherwise, I'm happy to do it um, and just unmute whenever you want to talk. And Vincent, please take it away. So great to have you here. Great to see everyone with you here. Now it's perfect. Vincent, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Shaman. Uh, yeah, great to be here. Um, and nice to see some, some new faces. Um, so yeah, I guess for those of you that don't know me, um, I'm from Long Island. Um, my background's in engineering and design and I've been, yeah, spending the last few years working on um, questions and problems such as how, how do we find each other and how do we um, collaboratively organize our knowledge and how do we connect people to what matters most? Um, and so that's some of the questions that the um, Trove platform is hoping to solve. And um, yeah, really excited um, to share some of the updates from the week. Uh, and I have some, some questions or musings, um, I guess, around, around the current kind of development. Um, so, but yeah, before, before I jump in, um, does anyone have any, uh, any, any questions or anything? I think maybe an intro would be great. Um, and then we can, I'm sure a lot of questions will pop up after your, your intro. Again, we got some folks hearing you for the first time, as well as on the recording. Um, so yeah, please start from as early as you want to start. I was born. I, as I as I tell my mom, uh, my mom has dementia, and so I talk with her. And we have long conversations on the phone and on video conference, and I and I tell her, "Mom, you're my mommy." I tell her, "I came out of your stomach," <gasps> and when I did, I was just a little sticky red baby. And I start from there, and she cracks up, and it's awesome. So if you want to start from as early as you want to start, Vincent, and uh, but it's totally up to you. Take it away. <laughs> Yeah, I'll give a brief, I'll give a brief kind of uh, summary. So yeah, um, I initially launched an initiative at um, where I went to school, Rensselaer Polytechnic, to help students connect with uh, co-founders, opportunities, and projects within the kind of entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, and so the goal was to encourage more start startups and foster a culture of creativity and innovation. Um, and yeah, I guess after after leaving that, that sphere um, and starting to work in the real world with um, different businesses um, in the food industry in particular with my family, my family in Italy, um, and then also just launching different kind of social impact projects. Um, I realized it's not just about creating startups and creating products that solve problems. It's being able to choose the right problems to solve that have a net positive impact on people on the planet by looking at the actual systems that they fit in and figuring out how to ask the really hard questions. Um, you know, like a, a lot of entrepreneurs, when they go into the world, I think they, they really believe that they're changing the world. Um, and they may be changing the world, but they also might be protecting the systems at the root of the problems that they actually wish to solve. Um, and so, yeah, with that, uh, definitely like the last year or so, uh, the platform has evolved a lot and realizing like a lot of the problems haven't changed, but the way that those problems might need to be solved um, might need to change in order to actually have a positive impact. Um, and so I was actually, there's actually going on right now a um, regenerative platform conference and I got to tune into the beginning of it this morning and they were talking about how, um, you know, like, there's actually like a huge, you know, potential and power of like large platforms like Facebook and LinkedIn because they have the network effects, uh, they have economies of scale, and you're able to coordinate globally with like you know millions of people, which is crazy. The problem is, I think, moreover, the kind of when you have a platform that has that much power and it doesn't, you the people who you have power over don't have the ability, don't have governance over the platform, don't have ownership over the platform, don't, don't actually benefit when the 
platform benefits. And so looking at the kind of like systems and ecosystems approach um, where, you know, we want to create organizations and tools and technology and systems that, um, that everyone can benefit from. Um, and so that's, that was kind of just like a big perspective shift that I had in the last few years that um, have changed the way that I've been going about solving the problem. And like, you know, the reason for these weekly meetings is like building in, in, in the village that's using the platform and not like, like not treating the tool as separate from our community, treating it as uh, like a part of that needs to be kind of steered and guided by the community for the community. Um, and so that's the kind of the reason for, yeah, for having these open, uh, open houses. And um, I think starting the next few weeks, um, I'm going to be sending out some other, some invites to other people to join. Um, so there might be a, a slightly bigger group the next few weeks. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, to just talk a bit more about Trove. So we've been working on this kind of like intersection of um, creating a social platform that can act as a, um, a few things. One is like a, an aggregation hub for communities to collect and curate knowledge collaboratively. Um, and doing that in a way which you can basically connect people to what they're looking for and what is relevant for them. And so, um, actually, Jamin, do you think you could pass screen sharing? Some visuals might help. Oh, of course, coming right up. All right, you're good to go, Vincent. Beautiful, thank you. Okay, so uh, one of the things um, this week that has kind of been in the in the long term plan for a while is being able to have like really advanced filtering and searching capabilities. Um, so, so I'll give you guys an example. Like, so in the kind of project directory in the project list. Um, so the initially we had just like last week, it was just you could search by like the name of a project or by skills. Um, but projects have so much information about them that you would need to know to be able to actually connect with a relevant project. So there's a project page for Trove and we have like the help needed, the compensation options, uh, the skills that we need help with, what we're open to. So like merging projects, federating data, being a co-op. Um, these are things that are like, you know, could be deal breakers for certain people to like join another project um, as well as the kind of like location, um, what locations the project serves or what it's in um, and you know what problems to solve. What are the related topics and tags that that project cares about? And so, or the related communities. Um, and so going back to the project directory, now you have the ability to actually filter by all of those criteria. So you could say like, show me all the projects that need um, software help. And then it'll show you like the five projects that need software. Um, or you can select the different, um, the different networks. So uh, social justice and impact design and mental health. And it'll show you the projects that, so there's 11 projects that have any of those tags. Um, you could also filter by location. So like uh, which projects are global, which ones are open to merging, uh, which ones uh, are paying people like, you know, uh, compensating with money, which ones can compensate with like a collaborative exchange or with Skillshare or with volunteers. Um, and so you're able to really, and then like what communities are these projects in? So like you could pick like, you know, uh, Kiko Lab or the Chrysalis Network. Um, and then it'll show you, um, you know, the different projects that meet those criteria. Um, so this is one of the, yeah, the main kind of changes we've made from the last week is like, how do we incorporate this like advanced search functionality so that when we open the platform up in a few weeks and there's not just 40 projects, but there's 200, how do you actually kind of like get through the <laughs> the, the stream and the information overload and actually find what's relevant. Beautiful. So, so yeah, that, that's great. So that's, 
a lot of intense work there. That's great. Well done. Yeah, thanks, Annie. Um, sure. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, I guess a few things for anyone who's, who's not on the platform, feel free to just uh, shoot your email in the chat and Jamin or I can, can send you an invite. Um, and um, I would definitely, so something that would be really helpful, um, you know, kind of being on the topic of projects is, yeah, maybe, maybe opening up a discussion and, and maybe if somebody else besides me wants to screen share um, and go to the kind of project explorer, like thinking more about like, what are the types of things that are important when you're looking for a project? And, and if anyone here has a project or is looking for a project, that would be like a really interesting perspective to have. Uh, and I just posted the link to, to the, the page that I'm talking about. So we've got something in the chat here. Oh, great. Franca would like to set up on Trove. Awesome, Franca. You are perfect for that. <clears throat> I have some uh, kind of questions and insights, but I'm going to wait till everyone else has spoken first. No hurry on my end. And I really encourage comments, questions. You'll find Vincent super awesome at answering. And he has an incredible track record of when people say, hey, what about this? What about that? you know, an idea because Vincent codes and he also has other coders working with him, they are incredibly fast at implementing stuff. So your idea that comes out of your mouth today might be up on Trove soon. Um, anyway, back to you, Vincent, and anyone else, please share away, everyone. Hi, it's Shannon here. Um, it occurs to me that uh, an affiliation between Trove and uh, other networks might be um, a real benefit. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, people uh, or organizations uh, in Trove yet. I, I noticed there seemed to be like 41. Um, and the all of the uh, presenters from uh, Humanity Rising over the past 268 days are entered into other networks. And uh, so I feel that Stan Pokras uh, would be a good person to have as a part of the uh, the going forward. Have you? Yeah, I see your applause. So it seems perhaps. Yeah. Vincent, you know about him yeah we actually uh we met a few days ago um uh, i think uh yeah for, through pico lab um um lauren and a few others actually had urged us to to meet so yeah we've been we've been talking about um i mean mostly technical nerdy stuff about how to um federate data um and so that's one thing that drove is very open to is um being able to share data across different platforms so yes, yeah, Sen and I have been talking about um, how we can best do that. Um, and he just, he's on the platform now and he created an account on Trove. Um, and so he's, he's gonna be playing around with it and we're gonna hopefully meet up soon to be able to do some of that data sharing. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a part of his after chat um, and um, it's been an amazing ride uh, through all of the, um, uh, sessions that uh, we we chat about each day that there is a, a session. Um, and Vincent, you're more than welcome to join us in the after chat of Humanity Rising. Uh, it's a um, very varied dialogue uh, between people of um, great wisdom and experience. And uh, so, uh, and quite often the, uh, the presenters come and join us. So we have uh, more than just the humanity rising uh, panel presentations. It's uh, turning out very, very good. Uh, and thank you, Vincent, for the work that you're doing. Uh, you're another one of the people that I was talking about earlier 
who are making it possible for everyone to be a part of the change we need in this world. Thank you for your work. If, in case you didn't make the connection, uh, Joa, who just joined your Gaia Zoom room, uh, he found us through Vincent's Platform Pro. That's that was that was our first person to come over from from Tro. So I was excited about that. <laughs> wow. And and he's an amazing man uh, from Brazil. Uh, he's he's from the eco village that started the Centro Daimo. And that's um, quite a movement across the world. That's so great to hear. Yeah, I, I recently um, got connected um, with Joe and we actually, yeah, we were on a call and um, I just sent him an invite. And um, so that's, yeah, super cool actually hearing the connections happening in real time. Can I just say, great to see the additional progress, Vincent. Um, Apologize, Louis, but I'm a bit distracted at the moment by working other aspects of what I'm working on. It's only through the actual use of what you're doing that you'll get the level of feedback that I sense you're looking for at the moment. Um, but one thing that did jump out, I see, you know, since last week, you've had the, the location search you just described and you've got the UK. Will it be possible to drill down even further than that? Yeah, so right now it's actually only showing locations where a project actually tagged that location. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So um, one thing is um, I think, so right now I have a list of every country and every US state. I think what would be really awesome for us is to work together. I'm sure there already is a database somewhere, but to basically import a database, which we could probably find easily online of the different regions in the UK or, or however you think might be the best way to kind of categorize or subcategorize the different areas um, and then import those as, as options for people to choose. Um, and that way, for like very location specific projects that you wanna go down to like the town level, you can also have filters with a town level, but how it would work is you have to import the data where it's related. So you would say like, um, I'm in East Rockaway. East Rockaway is a town in New York. New York is a state in the, U in the US. And so if somebody filters by US, they'll get East Rockaway. If somebody filters by UK, they'll get all the projects in the UK, but if they, filter by UK and then next to that, it'll show these are the counties in the UK and then, or regions. And then if you click a region, then it'll show the, the, the cities or the towns inside of that region. So you can go down and do that search like at any level, it could be country, state, city, town, but you have to import the data in a way that it's related. And then you can do the multi-tiered search. Okay. Sounds like you're ahead of me already, but uh, what's new? <laughs> 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 so yeah right now there's there's not many um very hyper local projects um one thing no. that Zhao is working on is um like yeah in the kind of regenerative eco villages and so we're we're also maybe we can have that conversation together um because we've been talking about the simon we've been talking about the location specific projects in like different farms right where like you actually care about exactly where it is on the map um mm -hmm. the other thing is having a um, I don't think I have it now actually, but having a map view um, for the, actually, oh no, there is a map, yeah. So um, there's a map view for the project as well. So if you put an address, it'll show your pin right on the map. Um, that location field is for like the locations that it, the project serves. That's like the area and not the pin, if that makes sense. That's all amazing, Vincent. Just something to go off a wee bit of a tangent, Jamie. And I, when I arrived in this meeting, I am, um, I put a little bit of an eye stock video that I'd found to, to, to go on my website. It only runs for about 30 seconds. If you can find it, quite nice to play it.
If you can't find it, it's, it's oh, it, it, and is is it on Trove or no, where? No, I put it in the chat. I nice stop. I oh, it. okay, yeah, no, no, happy to happy to play it. Let me go ahead and uh, six thirty six. Do, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Um looking for it okay you you posted it a little bit ago let me find i found it, it. oh I, okay you, you got it marco or shall i yeah i'll, I'll repost post it in the chat oh no no, i found it here i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and okay, it's the great. iStock. here we go yeah let me um let me do a proper screen share and we can watch it here it goes Kind of miraculous, isn't it? It's like it turns itself inside out. So beautiful. But it's just it's just the transformation that Shannon was talking about earlier. You know, we yeah. that's how the we chrysalis. Mm -hmm. Chrysalis turning into the beautiful butterfly. Mm -hmm. And Almost the struggle like, is really yeah. important. Th that's what I was going to say. You took the words out of my mouth. The, the struggle, the suffering seems to be like the hardship seems to be a part of the essential here. Yeah. It shows, right? It's showing yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for that, Simon. And Jamin. Yes. Thank you, Jamin, Simon, Vincent, all of you. This is amazing. Oh, yeah. The struggle, there it is. Yep, the and struggle. Then just, and then at some point it stops struggling and it says, okay, all right, I I give up, right? Mm. I'm gonna- That's from the outside, that's what it looks like. But what's going on inside the chrysalis is that all the systems are uh, breaking down. Uh, all the, the connections are being remade uh, and reformed. And that's what's going on in our world right now. That's exactly what's going on in our world. Yeah, reinvented, re regenerated, renewed. Yeah, renewed inside out. Yeah. I think an important difference is when the caterpillar goes in there and comes out the butterfly. You know, I know they refer to them as imaginal cells, but it's there's there's not really a choice we know that that caterpillar goes in and we know what comes out it's always a monarch butterfly to to overlay that on us and humanity right now we would truly be the imaginal selves because we have a choice to to the outcome and i think that's that's just a i mean as amazing as that is the idea that you know, our, our metamorphosis is under our control right now. So that's I amazing. Think so Marco, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, the, the, there are greater hands than ours. And while we have free choice, it is uh, only in, uh, in under the sufferance of uh, the greater hands that weave us together. Uh, and our ability to hear the the guidance of our great mother and, and the greater hands however you personify those greater hands um, it is through our um, listening to guidance that we will find the right way forward and we will fall into those patterns because that's the natural way and the monarch butterfly comes out of that chrysalis, the one that we are, will turn out to be a credit to our great parents in that 
um, um, under that plan, uh, the um, ar biological, archaeological, uh, architectural uh, creation. Uh, it, we don't have the plan. The plan is held outside of us, outside of time. And we do our best by listening inside and following the guidance that happens in our lives that I call mom, the magic and ordinary moments that lead us, guide us and change our lives. And we are awakening to that and, and opening our hearts and listening inside. And I'm so proud of us. This is so hard. I'm yeah. so grateful for all the work that you guys do. I was just thinking that Vincent might not be supplying the plan, but he's certainly providing the tools, isn't he? Well, he's creating the platforms, and that's how the imaginal cells get together. The, the platforms need to be created. Jamin, you have done your job and are doing your job. Vincent, you're another one, and I'm so grateful for you. Yeah, and right back at you, sister, each of us, you know, Simon, Annie, Sister Ivy, James, Franca, Michael, all of us, Marco, we're all doing our part in both creating platforms and also weaving these platforms together, right? That one, that one, Jamin, the weaving of the platforms together. You know, yesterday, my girlfriend uh, got onto an uh, another panel discussion like Humanity Rising, and it was named Humanity Rising. But the, it was not with the same um, logo. And so I, no, that's not the Humanity Rising. That, but what I did was I sent that off to Jim at Ubiquity University and said, maybe this is an opportunity to weave the platforms together. And so this is what's, this is the fun part. <laughs> well, thankfully, sorry, thankfully, um, there are some of us imagine ourselves starting to wake up and starting to connect. And yes, thanks to the likes of Jamin and, and, and Vincent with the, the platforms and the, the getting the Christmas calendar together and everything. Once we get those up and running, we will connect the other imagine ourselves. But what we also must maintain are a, 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 an awareness of an awareness of ourselves is that we also have to convince the other imaginal cells that they actually are part of the caterpillar. They're so, not aware of the fact that they're actually are part. They are part of the caterpillar, and that they also need to awaken their imaginal selves as well and join us to create the butterfly. So that's the vital part of it as well. I absolutely agree, James. And what I see also is that this is this is not the only place when when you find out that there's more than one humanity rising, you realize that none of this is resting on only our shoulders. We are not the only platform. The only way we can get together is by saying yes and. So yes to ourselves, and there's more than just us. It's not our responsibility to create this. This is being woven through our lives, through the, through mom. <laughs> Such an exciting time. Definitely, James, that's an excellent point. Us being awakened by ourselves will not suffice to bring up the change and have it continue building towards a world of compassion but awakening others that's the mission that we all have to undertake despite the the challenges and regardless of uh, how hard we have to work we're that's our mission and if uh, we don't allow that mission to come through us we get sick exactly 
that's where mental illness comes through is when we're not allowing that and of course our cultures and money and all of those things are real you know impediments but we need the impediments in order to that's the struggle that's absolutely struggle. absolutely absolutely that struggle and, and the awakening yes and until we all individually as well as the, the, the different individual cells realize that um we can't this is nothing personal this is not about just our individual self it's, it's the individual cells have to realize that they have to lay their personal beliefs or personal thoughts or you know egos or whatever it is they have to lay all that aside in order to have a, a positive flow among the other imaginal cells in order that once there's a positive flow among the imaginal cells then that's the only way the chrysalis can form the butterfly you know what i mean there has to be a positive flow for a positive outcome absolutely absolutely the healing of us all starts individually and that informs the platforms that inform the all that we are. For sure. Yeah. Well, I, I, I appreciate every one of you and all that you are doing. Um, unfortunately, I have to get going, but I hope that uh, Jamin, you're uh, able to record and, and uh, send it to me, as you said, uh, all these wonderful thoughts and processes and amazing um, minds and, and, and beautiful souls. So thank, thank you so much, so thank much you, Annie. Guys. And thank, thank you, you for all you are doing for in feeding plant-based foods to everyone. Annie is a major contributor to the big effort that's going on tomorrow at Doc Wilder Beach in Los Angeles, spearheaded by Sarah. Food Healers is happening. We've been dreaming about it for over a year, Food Healers Los Angeles, and now it's just totally coming to life. So thank you, Annie. And Yay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. You are welcome. Whether you can make it in person or not, we'll welcome you. If not this time, maybe one of the many times that we're we are planning to continue, as James said, continuous support, continuous work. Thank you so much for providing the, the platform, Jamin and all, and much love to you all. Thank you so very much. And Dr. Silas Rao too. Uh, and Annie, before, before you disappear, can I, can I ask a very quick question? Sure. I, I mean, what, in terms of what Vincent's doing, I, he's providing, I think, the opportunity for us not to, to reinvent the wheel. So I'm curious of how what you're doing might dovetail with what Vincent's doing in terms of creating some sort of template that can be replicated wherever somebody happens to be in the world. You mean for the food healers? Yeah. Uh, I'll try and think of, of, of doing maybe some drawings. <laughs> what I've done previously, and of course this is not about food healers, but it's about food. I created, uh, I, I uh, drew a, a menu, bloody cafe menu to awaken people. Like, for example, <laughs> I hope it's okay to share this again. The uh, tortured or uh, rape tortured mommy cow uh, beef burger comes uh, with a side of complimentary heart attack. That was on the menu, for example. So I created it so that people make the connection with some of them had high blood pressure, some would have cancer. These are pain that people deal with every day. Every household has some of these ailments and somehow they disconnect it. And it's not their fault. Of course, the industry does an amazing job at it. With our money, $38 billion is just a starting point. But that menu was very effective for some people to see. Unfortunately, I shared it here uh, on the site, but it came as numbers. It didn't show the pictures, but hopefully uh, I don't have it in person. I donated it to the person that 
actually has the head of murdered pig, uh, you know, display and a baby lamb. And we walked around Santa Monica when people were eating into the restaurant and we gave speak outs and we, you know, made it that they would not feel that we're condemning them. We were there to, to, to awaken them to the reality and needed their support, needed their help in it. So, but with the food healers, I have to come up with the food healing kind of design. Now this is going to be an uplifting kind of look. And, and you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to try and draw some ideas and see what I could come up with. And Vincent maybe could build on it. And if anybody has any ideas, please pitch it in. Um, to me and um, uh, Jamin has my, uh, Jamin, you have my uh, email, right? If you want to share it. Oh, thank you. You do, right? Uh, yes, you I do. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'll, so, I'll put it in. I'll put it in. So, so if, yeah, if anybody wants to send me any kind of idea, um, but yeah, I'll try and make it. Of course, this is going to be the, uh, the uplifting, more reaching out to people kind of thing. But uh, I would have loved it if everybody could have seen uh, let me see one second if I have one of them, if you guys want to continue on talking and I'll share it. Uh, I'll see if I have anything to show you here. Maybe I have one of them here. Because we did the protest like a few days ago, like last week. So I might have one of them here. Sure, sure. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Oh, my that goodness. Great. That oh, would be great. We got we have the carrot and the stick approach. We can have a dinner party where we have vegan, nice quality vegan food. And Jamin, you'll be the guest of honor and you'll do your talk. And we'll have a band. We'll have like two bands afterwards with dancing and live music. I mean not live music, but we'll have we'll play vintage uh, C D dance music, disco and shit. We'll call it Disco and Shit will be the name of the event. Yeah, go ahead, Simon. <laughs> Michael was talking there. That that's actually a really interesting idea. People could have dinner parties wherever they are in the world with a guest speaker on the subject of food. So there'd be an internet connection for the guest speaker, but you'd be talking to people that are gathering together in small groups to break bread. Is bread okay? Can we eat bread? Um, well, our, our topics would be as discussed uh, with Jamin's talks, leading the talks here on the uh, on the chrysalis. That would be the keynote speaking aspect. I think we could sell tickets to something like that. We could get Kobo, former Kobo Arena. It's now, uh, I think it's some, some different name right now, downtown Detroit. And they have big... Uh, they, they rent it out for banquets, you know. Why, why don't we have our own banquet? Okay, I found some, some things that I, I kind of... Sorry. Uh, this is uh, some of the, the menu starting like... <laughs> this was the bloody menu that I created. The original one that we had it remade. And this was just a basic idea. This is the backside of the dessert and the drinks. And this is what's inside the menu. This is what's inside the menu. Yeah, while well, you have your carrot and your stick approach. I like the carrot approach. <laughs> this was the bloody menu because people that are eating and just oblivious to the reality we you know just wanted them to 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 reach out to them um and and for them to see what is really behind the scene that they are trying to disconnect and have cognitive dissonance about so um this is the idea and this this one by the way is for regan russell that everybody knows like jill in england who was murdered by the animal agriculture. This is in memory of her. We are all their voices. Wow, that's beautiful, sister, beautiful. I can, you, you ought to reproduce copies of that, like posters and then put your the name of your organization, how to, how to reach your organization with your uh, 
email address or whatever. Create yeah. uh, posters. I, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, don't know. which organization to reach out and, uh, but yeah, um, definitely something to um, consider. But I, as I said, I'm oh, not- Julian, I, 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 Ju I'm this not guy, sure. Julian, Julian, who's on our, uh, I have his phone number. Julian's very interested in doing banners and such for uh, vegan vegan banners. I would recommend you talk to Julian when he's on later, probably later today. You can come oh, back he later. Oh, he if in case I do not come if on, uh, would you please on. pass on my information, my email, so he could connect with me? So he could connect with me? Yes, I will. I'll call Thank him you. later. I'm busy awesome. for a while. I'll oh, do awesome. that. Yep. That would be great. Yeah, if he reaches that out to me and tells me that you refer him, then, you, you know, him, I could take pictures and maybe pictures he's in California. He's in California. Yeah, he's very, uh, he is a very creative person. He's got a number of great ideas with regard to actual uh, vegan products you might be interested in learning about. Awesome. Awesome. I have other things that I made to like Biota wetlands. Like uh, wetlands. Let me get that wetlands, too real fast. Uh, because we want people fast. to see that animals are kind. The wetlands that are destroyed by the gas company and the, the construction people. So this is what I made for that. Yeah. Oh, let me see that. Hang on. Let me go to that uh, page. Wow, that's good. I love that. And I put the message What's under the name it. Of and it? I put the message under it. Bologna, Don't destroy Bologna wetlands. Destroy Bologna wetlands. <laughs> Bologna wetlands. Yeah, Sister Ivy and uh, and Sarah. Sarah, we're talking about saving Bologna. And uh, <laughs> Mona, I think her name is, what's her name again? Mona or uh, the gal running for LA City Council. Oh, Mo oh Molly, 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 I organized it. Oh, yeah, I Molly. organized it uh, yeah, with her, the protest. Uh, yes, yeah, about I'm a, the Bayona. I'm a, yeah. About the Bayona. Yeah, I am a, uh, I'm a campaign uh, supporter of hers. Oh, wonderful. But she'll listen to oh, us. Wonderful. She'll listen no. to us. Let, let, let her know that you were, you were in on this talk with uh, Jamin's group. Yeah. And she'll, oh, uh, she'll love to hear that. Oh, my. Marco, oh, yeah. Marco, right? Marco, what's yeah. your last Marco, right? Marco, what's your last Brent. Oh, sorry, Brent. I apologize. Oh, I'm not Brent. looking at the name. I'm just hearing the voices and I, I apologize. Do you have to compute? So, so, to compute. Can you repeat what you said? It was a lot of echo. I didn't understand. I have a bad connection, unfortunately, but uh, I, I listen to 75%, which is what I do in real life anyway. So I guess I'm batting like 75% listening. Actually, Michael, yeah, I think we were getting the echo from you, Michael. So if you don't mind muting, Michael, thank you. And Sister Ivy had a question. Go ahead, Sister Ivy. Uh, thank you. No, I was saying that there was an echo and we couldn't follow it that easily, but if it's gone, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. This this is what I you know these are the type some of the things that I made. But yeah, I, I as I said, I, I'm welcome to any ideas. Um, I'm sorry I have to get going, but I'm more than happy to take any um, any kind of comments, ideas, and. Uh, uh, communications uh, i would love to to be a part of it i would love to yeah i'll i'll send you an email about that last one about bologna saving bologna that's kind of a hot topic i'd like to help produce some uh some nice posters of that of that painting awesome i'll awesome. email you about that awesome. thank uh, you i will look for it yes thank you yeah absolutely i even have this one you might like it's not as uh, colorful as uh, the other, but this one's another one I made real fast next to it. Beautiful. I love your art, sister. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, anything to try and reach out to people, anything and everything. Is it clear? Does it show everything? Yeah, yeah now we see like it. Now we see it. That's perfect. Now we see it. Is that a hawk or what is that? Yeah, it's an owl. It's, you know, some of those owls that are, that, that that's their home. Some of the rare owls, I can't remember the breed right now, but they have been coming back, according to the biologist, uh, Robert uh, Duke, I think uh, he is with Marsha. They've been fighting to protect Biona for years. And he's been collecting data about these animals, more than 1,700 species that are, um, some, so many of them are in the brink of extinction and their families have Biona for their home. And um, so we have been campaigning, but I thought the art could be effective way to show people, because if they can't hear us, they could at least see what we're holding. So this is why I try to do the visual art. Uh, when we go protesting, we organize. It's, uh, I, I organize with my, I call my big brother, my vegan big brother, Michael Fujimori. Um, and then Molly, uh, the, the two of us put the work and pay, create the, the page. And with Molly, uh, we did a couple, several of the protests. And we've been on the Zoom meetings and fighting for this to try and stop them. And they're using every tactic they can from giving us two minutes and then cutting us off into one minute and not taking all the calls so often. So we've been doing everything we can in person, Zoom and, and protesting. So this is one of the projects that we're working on. Thank you. Talk to your federal representatives and your governor right away. Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. Please talk to your federal representatives right away and your governor. Oh, you did? You talked or you oh, want you me did? to? You talked, no, you, you should. You I should see. do that, please. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a couple, yeah, of, yeah, I have some yeah. projects I'm producing. I have some live events I'm producing locally. I'm busy for the next I two see. months. But uh, I, I encourage that, please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for caring. So this way I will wrap it up here and um, much love to you guys. Thank you and have a beautiful, blissful day ahead. Thank you, thank Sister you. Annie. Thank you, thank you so Annie. much. Thank much you so love. much. Yes. Much love. We'll Take be in care. touch very soon. Thank you. Thank you, see you, bye-bye. See you soon. See you soon. Brother Jamin, you know uh, what it says. It happens to all of us, I think. El que mucho se despide, pocas ganas tiene de irse. Eso sí, el que mucho se despide, pocas ganas tiene de irse. <laughs> in, Eng in English, for those of you in England, he who takes a lot of time to say goodbye has really no desire to get going. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's really synchronistic because that was the same thing Jimena said last night for about two and a half hours. She tried, kept saying she was going to leave and then she finally said the one who says goodbye the most really doesn't want to leave. Yeah, there you go. But uh, she'd been doing testing all day, so I don't know. Anyhow, it's just funny that I would hear that saying, tw you know, twice in two days, or well, less than a, less than twelve hours, less than less than twelve hours. Well, Alch Alchemy Monday was on last night, along with I think Tony made an appearance. That was cool.
You know, what's just fascinating is just seeing the diversity of networks and projects that are all starting to come together. Um, and in last, last segment, we were talking about how there is this resistance that was pointed out in Simon's uh, images there of the chrysalis, the resistance, notice the resistance. And we talked about earlier in last segment, two different forms of resistance. One is attacks from the outside, from outside the chrysalis and others are attacks from within as they see, um, we call those the Klingons who attack imaginal cells who are waking up and rising and doing good work, but then they feel threatened because, hey, you're taking the spotlight away from me, or you're taking credit away from me, or you're, you know, a, a threat to my business model or whatever. And so, um, you know, we are left every day with the question, how do we all come together? How do we stay together? How do we work together in harmony, um, both with our diversity, but at the same time with this growing unity, this urgent unity. Um, and oh, looks like my- Yeah, I like the uh, catalyst.network mm -hmm. catalyst where they have the transcriptions of the talks. I think they have the transcriptions of the talks according to uh, uh, what uh, Vincent had said, I think. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're increasingly getting the transcripts up on there, um, and but anyway, there, there's a, a a larger point that um, I'm I'd like to get to, which is that there are so many different uh, platforms that um, are of such different character, such different nature, and. Um, you know, some of these platforms represent just vast networks in and of themselves, like Clubhouse, for example, which I've been itching to get onto. But since I've been in the process of moving and getting settled in here, I just haven't made time for that. Um, my time is either moving and with family or here on this meeting. And I haven't even, haven't even had time to build out the chrysalis, our own chrysalis calendar yet, partly just because I've been in so much flux. But, um, you know, one of the interesting things about Clubhouse is so much of it is so dynamic that, that there's probably, you know, not even opportunity for much or maybe even most of the conversations that are there to even make it onto a calendar to begin with. They just, they're just happening in the moment. And that's really, really exciting um, because we're getting to this singularity where there's enough of a density of conversations enough of a concentration of conversations on a platform like Clubhouse that new conversations can spin off in real time, right? And of course, we're going to have the ongoing challenge of mapping those, getting those not necessarily onto a calendar, but more like a real time map of what's happening right now, this moment. And uh, David, uh, Pinto from England was on earlier today and earlier this week. Sister Ivy, I'm going to mute you because we're getting feedback. Um, and he was uh, talking about, um, you know, the imperative to of now and how do we get stuff to go viral in the moment right now. And so we have stuff operating kind of on different time scales. There's that which can be planned out in advance and you know, people can then schedule and plan to go to this meeting and then next Thursday plan to go to that meeting, et cetera. But then at the same time, we also have stuff happening in real time in the moment now. And how do we facilitate, how do we make all of the above transparent, both that which is happening right now, as well as that which is planned. And uh, how do we bring all these calendars and maps together into one central thing? Technologically, that is not a problem. We could have done this with 20 year old technology 20 years ago. In 2001, a space odyssey, we could have done this. So we have an overkill of technology to facilitate all this. Um, but having the tools to do something and actually doing it are two different things. So 
we need to work together. But then I think one of the biggest obstacles is just this whole ego and uh, Klingon, Klingons attacking imaginal cells inside the chrysalis uh, who feel threatened by the rise of other imaginal cells, or actually I should say more correctly, of the rise of imaginal cells, period, because Klingons, by the very nature of their destructive, the destruction they unleash inside the chrysalis, they're not imaginal cells. They may pretend to be, but just because somebody says, hey, I'm an imaginal cell, doesn't make them imaginal. Just like someone saying, oh, I'm compassionate, doesn't make them compassionate. Um, so um, there's so many moving parts to all this and so many facets, so many aspects and so much addiction, right? Which is kind of the enemy inside, the devil inside to quote a, a well-known Hollywood production from some years ago. It's the devil inside that um, we oftentimes need to be the most concerned about. And um, so how do we simultaneously treat our addictions, shed our addictions, rise together, come together in harmony, deal with the Klingons and figure out the best ways to, to come together. Because each of these platforms that's bringing us together is also a centralizing thing. And how do we, how do we manage all these centralizing platforms with the general decentralized framework that's also emerging? You know, which is it, centralized or decentralized? Will the answer, the true answer, please stand up? Anyway, with that, I'm gonna pass the talking feather, just some momentary musings as we all evolve together. And since no one else is jumping on the feather, I will further comment that, you know, one idea that we bounced around a few weeks ago for how we could kind of find this balance between centralized and decentralized is um, by uh, essentially hashtags. I really like a lot of what Twitter does because anyone can use any hashtag as far as I know. And um, so a hashtag is not is something that uh, no one owns, doesn't really have a center, and yet everyone has access to and is by its very nature centralizing because anyone who subscribes to a given hashtag and says, hey, let me know anytime somebody tweets something with this hashtag, it becomes a centralizing thing. Everyone can, anyone who wants to can, um, you know, uh, be attracted to and come together around that hashtag. Um, but at the same time, it is totally decentralized. So that's an example of striking a balance, finding this sweet spot, resolving this tension between centralized, decentralized. Um, so anyway, that's one example. And for me, the ultimate hashtag is chrysalis itself. Right. Hence, we, we gave the name the Chrysalis Calendar, chrysaliscalendar.org. So anyone who's looking for chrysalis can find us not because we are the center or anything like that, but simply because of our name, our hashtag, our name. Right. And so um, if some sort of a blockchain, a chrysalis blockchain could emerge, right? Blockchain being, you know, one of the ultimate, in recent years anyway, ultimate forms of decentralization, a, de a distributed ledger, which is what a blockchain is. What if we created a distributed, decentralized ledger of all the calendars, all the mappings, all the hashtags that are relevant and everything they point to, um, and just you know, unleash that into the universe in this most decentralized way. I mean, there is no Bitcoin Inc. with an office in Manhattan or London or Tokyo. It simply doesn't exist. It's completely decentralized. It's just out there in cyberspace doing its thing. You know, the COVID virus is kind of another good example of a decentralized force in the world. There is no 
I mean, even though it might have started in a laboratory, just like Bitcoin started on Satoshi's computer somewhere, um, once it got set loose, it kind of didn't matter where it started. It's a thing that, you know, is a force to be reckoned with in the world. So how do we create this benevolent force to be reckoned with, this decentralized ledger of everything chrysalis? I'm just kind of peppering us all with questions here, waiting for someone else to grab the talking feather, like you. I would like to uh, offer something. Uh, uh, before I couldn't unmute it because there's a lot of noise here. Um, but this morning we were talking about focus. And I said, wow, I second that because that's exactly what we need to focus. And then I was saying, and the next thing is focus on what? And so that's the choice that we have. We focus on what is no good going on or what is no good, whatever, or we focus on the good. And I was saying, we definitely, of course, we know we need to focus on the good if we want good to come and good to happen. And so uh, when I heard about who, whoever said this quote that the, the devil within us or something, I remember that conversation this morning and I said, well, that's when we need to choose. And I know you, it's not your quote, brother, <laughs> but, um, and then I got into, well, I know another great quote, but a very wise teacher that says the kingdom of God, which is good, the kingdom of good is within. And so I made my choice right away. I'm just sharing this. I made my choice right away. And of course, I'm going to go with the kingdom of goodness of love is within me. And that way I can focus on the good. And because I know the minute I believe that there's a devil in me as whoever made that quote, I'm gonna start thinking that way. And so I'm gonna start acting that way and I'm gonna end up going that way. So I'm just sharing this because this is something that blesses me so much to be, <laughs> as you were saying, triple A, alert, awake, and aware to all this stuff that we hear because there's so many lies that we hear and, and so many uh, things that won't take us to the goal that we want of goodness. And I'm just very grateful for that. And I have disciplined myself. And like I said, I'm just sharing this because it's a blessing. Uh, I just have disciplined myself that to, to kind of catch on any of the many things that we hear through the day that are not for goodness and that are not good, so are not true. And uh, just, just grateful for that. And to have the opportunity to exercise that too, and that's what this was. So uh, uh, just sharing lovingly. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Sister Ivy. Wow, good stuff, good stuff. And uh, Simon, I think you had your, your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just thinking whilst you were saying that, Jamie, I mean, in my mind, when you talk about centralized and decentralized, I equate that to globalized and localized. Um, and you're talking about centralized and decentralized as, as if there's some sort of, I don't know, conflict there or something that needs to be resolved. The goal is results. Is there some sort of impediment in centralized? Can two centralized efforts come together and work together? Um, that's the key, you know, a positive outcome. That's, that's what we want. So if you're identifying impediments to results, you know, just to simply define it as centralized or decentralized, what's, what's the dynamic there that, that causes the issues? That's what I'm trying to understand.
Yeah. Um, so first of all, it's not necessarily um, a conflict that needs to be resolved. I just, it's, for me, it's, it's a valuable tool for just opening up discussion, right? And um, now one of the shadow sides of centralization is when a platform grows so big that it kind of outgrows its usefulness, like Facebook outgrew its usefulness when it was a little startup project and it was, it was very useful for people to connect and share and find each other. Great, wonderful. But then it became this big money-making machine and it became in a sense hijacked by uh, financial interests, those of Mark Zuckerberg and other owners, as well as the Trump campaign. They famously used Facebook along with Cambridge Analytica to sway the results of the 2016 election. And we had four years of tremendous darkness that we are still not far from coming out of, we're going deeper into with Trumpism becoming a major, it's essentially the new Nazi party in the United States. And uh, anyway, um, so that, yeah, that, that example of Facebook and, and the, the overextension of its power and the outgrowing of its usefulness um, is, is, is a big one. Any platform that has centralized power, like Twitter, for example, I mean, I thought, oh, Twitter, it's great, uh, hashtags, this and that, nobody owns a hashtag. Yeah, sure, but Twitter can shut down your account. Our Zoom channel used to broadcast on YouTube, broadcasted live on YouTube. That's how James found us. He was watching a live YouTube broadcast, but because we were mentioning COVID, they shut us down. And I haven't taken the trouble to figure out how to get restarted on there. So. Any platform can become too much of a centralized power, have too much power, and um, you know become a negative force, or or at a minimum adopt negative elements. Um, so you know how do we balance the you know the necessity of a Twitter? I said a Twitter. You know, is there? one and only, you know, it's interesting. So as I talk about this, like, and I talk about YouTube and I bemoan and decry the abuses of power of YouTube, I'm reminded of a decentralized video sharing platform, uh, Theta, you know, which is uh, on the blockchain and it's, it's doing its own thing, Theta, 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 T-H-E-T-A. Um, and uh, so in a, in a way, part of what's been happening with uh, the blockchain, decentralization, cryptocurrencies, et cetera, is new forms are emerging that are built in decentralized to begin with. And I would believe, I believe that there is space in the world for both a centralized YouTube and a decentralized Theta, and they can coexist. So it's kind of like, um, you know, just living with this ambiguity and contradiction between centralization, decentralization, and just, uh, it's, it's kind of more like a lens with which to look through the world. You know, I can look out this window and I can see good and I can see evil. So is the, is the window good or is it evil? Or what's the point of the window? Well, it has lots of points. And it's just another perspective, looking at the world through the lenses, the, the bifocals of centralization versus decentralization. I, I know that's kind of a wishy-washy answer, but Sometimes I'm kind of a wishy-washy guy. So anyway, passing the feather to more serious and uh, wise voices. I did notice I was earlier trying to see what Clubhouse was all about, log in or whatever, but you can't, you have to be invited. You can't just go on. They said, yeah, you have to have somebody, you know, invite you, or you can go on eBay and buy and invite. I'm like, that just sounds dumb. Now, how ridiculous is that? See, there's a perfect example of capitalism, you know, wedging its greedy, you know, wedge into and you know, buy an invite. My goodness. It's like buying a date. There's a name for that. It's called prostitution. Well, eBay is now prostituting um, something that shouldn't be prostituted. Um, 
as is prostitution itself. By the way, Vincent, I think, has some invite bullets um, in his Pancho Villa vest that I think he might be able to uh, give you one. So I would hit up Vincent and just see if he does. You know, just ask him if he's got a spare one. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I was looking at it, and it, it's like Clubhouse went from. I don't. I don't understand. I really don't understand again how it's, you know, making money or being valued, but. And it's, it started in March 2020, and they received a $12 million investment from Anderson Horowitz after only being in existence for two months. It was quickly worth $100 million when it had only 1,500 users. It was worth $100 million. I don't get that at all. And then uh, April 20, by April 2021 here, it was worth $4 billion. I'm confused. Do well, you have any light to shed on how that money is? Uh, oh, I can totally shed light on that. It's, it's um, the, um, as well as anyone else who'd like to shed light. But basically whenever a new platform is emerging, that is defining a new niche, that's doing something that no one else had done before. Um, it, investors value that because they see that as carving out some unique territory with a unique brand, a unique value proposition that will probably make a lot or possibly make a lot of money someday. And so even though they don't have any revenue that I know of, I don't think they have any advertising or anything like that, kind of like the application WhatsApp. It busted out on the scene as this cool little app. People started downloading it and communicating with it. And Facebook suddenly perceived it as a threat. And so they bought it out for something like $16 billion, right? Um, what's happening with these investors, they're, they're coming in and saying, hey, I want to own a piece of Clubhouse. How much money do I have to give you to buy, say, a percent of Clubhouse, right? And um, that's all that's happening here. And then the owners of Clubhouse, you know, being savvy negotiators or having hired savvy negotiators um, can keep on jacking up the price. And so it's kind of a supply and demand. There's so many shares of Clubhouse that they're willing to sell to part with. And they just negotiate for top dollar. And over time, the price of those shares keeps ratcheting up as long as they're growing. So even if they had no users, not a single user, but they had some cool software and a cool presentation, a cool slide deck. They could get money invested and, you know, a valuation, right? Hmm. I'm following on from what Mark was saying, I don't understand. I don't understand why Facebook didn't just copy WhatsApp, come up with a new name. It, it, you know, with all their marketing muscle, they didn't need a small user base, did they? No, no, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, uh, Facebook actually did the right move by throwing down $16 billion to actually acquire it rather than trying to b build their own for one very simple reason. And that is encapsulated in law number one of the 22 immutable laws of marketing. I'm going to put that title in the chat. Everyone should read this book. Um, I gave dozens of copies of it out at Microsoft to train our people there. The laws of marketing, the 22 mutable laws of marketing by Rise and Trout. Read that book. Um, you can probably get a free copy online and just get the essence of it. But there are 22 laws of marketing and um, law number one, and by far the most important is this, it's better to be first than it is to be better, which flies in the face of everything you ever learned ever since you were a little kid, which is, you know what, no, do the best you can do, take your time, even if it takes longer, do the best you can do. That it, no, law number one of marketing says the opposite, and the law number one is right. What we were taught as kids is wrong. It's better to be first than it is to be better 
being first is everything in marketing. So as soon as WhatsApp got out there and they were first, yes, Facebook could have spent a fraction of that 16 billion in developing a better WhatsApp. So then the market would be faced with a choice. Do I go with the first thing that's out there, WhatsApp, or this better thing that Facebook created? It's better to be first than it is to be better. Because if you're first, and it's really first to mind, it's not, it's not even first to market, it's first to mind. Well, they were first to mind and first to market, which is the double crown to, for a successful launch. And so bottom line, um, no matter how many billions Facebook were to throw at it, they would never be able to catch up. That's the bottom line. So instead of trying to surpass a runner that they couldn't pass up on the marathon, they just bought the runner so, and brought it in-house. I don't know if that answers your question, Simon. So you're saying centralization as opposed to decentralization is a manifestation of capitalism? Uh, I wasn't exactly saying that. And um, oh, but, but following on, you know, just following the conversation generally, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, I'll give you an example. People perceive centralization as bad. I tried very hard a while ago not to buy stuff off Amazon. And I wanted a book and I did a search and I found a book. It was like green something or other. And I bought this book and a friend of mine said, you know, Amazon probably own them. And sure enough, I did a search. So Amazon are so controlling and they know there's a certain element of people that will, that will go out of their way not to use Amazon. So they've got other brand names that they still own which still all leads back to Jeff Bezos, of course. And that is the same with so many businesses that, I mean, I actually saw something the other day where actually indicated that basically there was one company that owned everything. You know, you can track everything back to the same handful of companies, investors. It's like a handful of um, uh, venture capital companies that pretty much own everything. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it's not. It's not only that Amazon owns everything and the competition, like you just found out. A lot of the stuff that's sold on Amazon, you go search on Amazon. I used to have have an Amazon store. I sold the. Uh, I would go to like garage sales and the library sales that they have, like twice a year, where you can. On the last day, you can get a grocery bag full of CDs or DVDs, anything you can fit in a grocery bag, books, $2. My cost ended up being like four cents a piece. And I sell used CDs and DVDs and books until. So it was pretty easy to do, but eventually they said, oh, we need because of the copyright laws and people selling fake CDs, we need a, you need to provide us with an invoice and your supplier's name and address and everything. And I'm like, how, I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to do that? You know, I explain what it is. And he's like, well, since you can't provide it, we're shutting your shop down. So they shut my shop down. And then like two weeks ago, it's been down for like two years. Two weeks ago, all of a sudden I get an email you sold this book, you need to send it out immediately. And I'm like, well, you closed my shop down. How am I now all of a sudden selling stuff again? It's like, but, but anyhow, the thing is now all these little independent people are counting on Amazon to make their money too. So they've got us, got us every which way you can imagine. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And speaking of Amazon buying up these other companies, right? It's kind of a picture of like the medium sized fish swallowing a small fish, but then the medium sized fish gets swallowed up by a larger fish. I tried to make Microsoft that larger fish that would acquire Amazon. When I was corporate strategy manager at Microsoft, Amazon had a market cap of $20 billion. We could have done a hostile takeover of Amazon for $20 billion plus a little, right? 
Oh, shit. I was pounding the table. I said, holy crap, Amazon is going to take it all the way. Let's buy them out. It would have been nothing for Microsoft to gobble up that fish. Anyway, I could go on and on about the collective stupidity of Microsoft, but I won't. And <laughs> we used to say internally, Microsoft is a victim of their own success. We're a victim of our own success. We make so much money selling Windows and Office that we can't even see other opportunities, right? But anyway, that's a that's a side note. But the but. Yeah. Anyway, but it, but it's also an interesting point about a bigger fish even swallowing up that which has now become the biggest fish, right? Wow, brother, I like that term, collective stupidity, because it makes me aware that it's out there and, and we better be very alert to it. <laughs> alert, awake, and aware. And that's why I say we need to, and you taught me that, that phrase, alert, awake, and aware. We need to be alert, awake, and aware to our own addictions, as well as to the various forms of Klingons out there, those external to the chrysalis, as well as those internal to the chrysalis. By the way, I, I contributed to uh, Microsoft making their first probably 200 million with software sales in and around uh, around the country with a computer resale company back in the eighties I was with, I collected senior credit rep for a bunch of big uh, organizations, you know, that bought a lot of software. I collect a lot of money for Mr. Gates. Well, I guess I the should thank you. The founders of our company, we were, so, we were so unique. The founders of our company used to go to Bill's place back in the day he would have some of your, his biggest resellers into his house every year. And uh, he was on the first name basis with Bill. Yeah, for me, the big picture is all these companies, Amazon, Microsoft, they all start out small. Everything starts out small. And so many of these have grown so big and have become so efficient at turning virgin Amazon forest into mahogany furniture sold on Amazon and dead animals sold at McDonald's and Burger King that it's just, it's a wildfire lit by millions of matches. And it's gonna take the most powerful collective super intelligence to finally rein this in if it can be reined in in time we're sitting on this tremendous urgency for us to bring these various different networks platforms communities groups individuals all the imaginal cells together as one final stand right one final normandy attack to finally put this beast to bed of runaway destructive capitalism and yeah. that's yeah I, I i'm i got two quotes that i really like one is never underestimate the power of a small group of committed people to change the world in fact it is the only way think it is the only thing that ever has that's margaret mead and and my other favorite one is uh by george carlin it says, never underestimate the power of stupid people in large groups. Yeah, and now what we need to do, and this gets right to the heart of the centralized, decentralized conversation, exploration, window, call it what you will, is how do we, how do we um, put together the power of a small group Put a put you know thousands tens of thousands of small groups together to form a collective, but thread the thread the eye of the needle in between one side, which is collective stupidity, and the other side, which is collective superintelligence, which we're in the process of inventing. How do we come together so that we're big enough to be a collective superintelligence, but decentralized enough to not fall into the trap? of either corruption or collective stupidity, which are two sides of the same coin. And I'm sure glad well, we're recording this. 
Oh, we're recording. You better believe it, sister. Never stopped. Oh, we got it. <laughs> we've got a pause request. So pausing recording. So after a brief pause, um, you know, back to the main question, you know, how do we get us together uh, in a way that's sufficiently decentralized that we avoid collective stupidity and yet that is sufficiently united, we wo woven together that we uh, co-create collective super intelligence so that we can finally come up with and implement all the solutions that we need to save, heal, and transform. By the way, did you, did you happen to see the quote? I think it's a general approximate quote of George Carlin's Imagine your average intelligence in a group, and then 50% uh, of the people are dumber than you <laughs> in the group. I'm sorry. That's kind of out, outmoded thinking, you know. Okay, we've got a pause, pausing recording. So back, so back to it after a pause, um, you know, how do we strike this balance? Um, and, you know, I was talking earlier about, you know, decentralization and chrysalis as a keyword. Basically, I, I kind of have this, this image in my head of all these different networks that are out there that are really a part of it and that really want to be a part of it and have something valuable to contribute. Um, what we need to spread, I think more than anything else, this is just an idea. I'm just going to step out on a limb and give this idea. The idea is what if we spread the meme of the chrysalis and we simply asked everyone, if you're part of it, if you get it, if you get the story, if you get the meme, hashtag yourself chrysalis or chrysalis calendar right? So that we can find you, so that others can find you. And let hundreds of platforms emerge that can then scour cyberspace, scour the internet, scour the world, and find all those groups, communities, conversations, chrysalis calendars, platforms, and anything and everything else that is related to the chrysalis. Consolidate, bring all those together, not consolidate them under one roof or under one tent as far as an organization or a platform or community or anything like that, but bring all that information under one tent. <clears throat> I was using Twitter as a great example for that with the whole hashtag thing. Google is another great example from the standpoint of indexing and search. When Google came along, they didn't have, you didn't have to sign up you didn't have to join them. You didn't have to get acquired by them. They didn't have to put anything on your website. They just found your information, indexed it very efficiently and made it easy for other people to find you and your website, right? So Google is another great example. So we have great examples to draw from and great platforms that we can use for this purpose. How do we create the ultimate aggregator of information so that chrysalis imaginal cells can find chrysalis events and chrysalis calendars and other imaginal cells. How do we create this ultimate decentralized, not another Facebook because another Facebook could probably fall into the same damn trap as Facebook fell into, the money trap, right? How do we create a money-free, set of platforms and systems how do we inspire not create but inspire and aggregate a money-free set of platforms and web services to help imaginal cells find other imaginal cells we need a match.com for imaginal cells now trove is the closest thing i've seen to that right but what happens when some investors go up to vincent and say hey vincent you want a lamborghini you know, you want a big house? <laughs> Here's some money, right? Let us buy a piece of Trove, right? Um, and that's not to say that Vincent is any more susceptible than you or I or anyone else to that kind of thing, but we are, and this is, 
what I was talking about, about the addictions. We have to be alert, awake, and aware to the devil inside, which is our own addictions to money and our own weaknesses. So we're basically, um, you know, the picture of the proverbial picture of the three American soldiers in Vietnam, you know, holding on to each other. One's got his head all bandaged up and can barely see. The other one's got a broken leg. You know, we're all, we're three wounded soldiers, you know, trying to make our way out of the forest in the Mekong Delta and not get our, the rest of us blown apart. Um, and, you know, how do we, how do we find our way forward being all beaten up, beaten down, addicted, right? And in a world full of lies and deception and illusion, how do we do this? I'm just speculating right now because we're now six hours into the block party. <laughs> And it's freaking time. It's time for us to figure this out. We don't have a buttload more time. According to Guy McPherson. According to the facts. Right? So, you know, where are we at? Where do we need to go? What are the next steps? Chrysalis calendar great concept. I just need some time to add some stuff to it. All of you are welcome to add stuff to it. Uh, that's one thing. Another thing is Clubhouse. I haven't even been on Clubhouse yet. I've got an invitation. I started setting up my account. I need to complete that and then get on there and start jamming. Um, Clubhouse maybe. I think, you know, because a lot of people have been telling me that Jamin, you could be very successful up on Clubhouse. So what I'm thinking is maybe what we can do is have some of these conversations on Clubhouse while they're happening here at the same time. I could get on Clubhouse, start speaking and have the Zoom channel rolling. So we're recording, I'm being recorded, um, but other people on Clubhouse are not because we don't want to violate their privacy. We want to be able to swim like a fish within Clubhouse, but at least record. I mean, we'll, we'll set up our own rooms. We'll have our own rooms in Clubhouse. And um, I think our message is very compelling. Let's practice it here. Why not? Alan's got something to say. Alan, go for it. It's just, um, it's only just came to me just now. It's an idea, but um, f Facebook Live gets um, obviously a lot more viewers because they, they, they start off their video, they say, would anyone watching like to, to share in groups and to sort of spread it around a bit and then get people coming in. How about um, organizing for the future uh, a breakout room that could be open on a certain evening that broadcasts for a few hours live and broadcasts directly to Facebook and invites people to come and join us, even if they're coming in through, you know, as I say, like a breakout room or something else that's in just doing a live broadcast. Would, would that be a good idea? Is that something that would, would help to... It's just, um, I was looking there at your YouTube channel and it's like, five views. I think the, the most I saw was 50 views of the actual people who've watched the videos. It's um, it's not exactly going viral at the moment, but we need to do something. I don't know what it is, but like you're asking the question there, what is it that we need to do to, to reach? Because um, action really is equated to numbers, isn't it? You know, it, it's interesting what you're bringing up in terms of numbers. I, clearly, we haven't found the right mix of media. We've got the right conversation, the right insights, uh, the right basic idea of collective superintelligence and the right idea of its evolution. But we haven't found, you know, we haven't found the door, the front door to knock on, to kick over, to kick in or whatever. Um, but um, I think Clubhouse may be the ticket because you get on there and I think stuff can go viral within Clubhouse. I think there's, I think, I think that's just the place where the conversation is happening because precisely because see with the Zoomosphere, there is no map, there is no directory, there is no calendar, there's nothing like that. It's every Zoom room to the, for, for themselves. Um, 
but Clubhouse has built into it total visibility to all the rooms that are happening. So you put up a room with a cool title and, you know, and then people can just tune in and listen in for a few seconds to see if that's interesting. And then if they like it, they stick around, right? And, and if they like it, they'll also spread the word, hey, come join us here in this room. This is where it's happening. And it sounds like a lot of our kind, I mean, basically we need to go to Clubhouse. We need to get up on Clubhouse. And so again, what I'm saying here is, what I might do is so that it's not either here or there, I'll be in both places, here and Clubhouse. Open a room on Clubhouse, I'll be talking, 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 and I'll be here in Zoom, um, but I'll basically just be broadcasting here on Zoom into our room here. And, you know, until Marco says, hey, Jamin, you know, shut up. Shannon's here. She wants to talk. Can you get your butt into a breakout room? No problem. So, you know, we'll I'll, I'll either stick myself into a breakout room or or Marco will take out a spiked baseball bat and beat me into a breakout. room. Either way is fine. As long as I get into a breakout room when other people want to be in the campfire. But if like there's nobody in the campfire and Marco fell asleep and his beard is burning because he forgot to put out his cigarette, you know, and he had, but the burning beard hasn't woken him up yet. Fine. I'll just talk here until Marco wakes up and then other people come in or whatever. Sorry to pick on you, Marco, but you're the only one aside from myself on video. So you make an easy target. Um, and Christopher is not here to give shit to. So it's on you, buddy. All right, go ahead, Marco. You're unmuted. Yeah. I had a couple, couple thoughts. Um, were, were you by any chance thinking about, about that, that, the uh, sometime between last night, sometime last night, because last night I was thinking the same thing about being here and Clubhouse at the same time. Yeah, I've been chipping away at that idea for the last few days. I think last night was one of those times. So yeah, I think we're, we're channeling each other. I think, yeah, because that way we, we keep this, we, we keep feeding our own Zoom room. And then also on Clubhouse, I'd say, hey, everybody, you know, come to our Zoom room. Right. Right. And, and the other point was, that, uh, Spark, Alan, what you were saying is like, I'm pretty sure you can only stream from the main room, not from breakout rooms. If you've got OBS Studio, you can do whatever you want. You have what? It's a free program called OBS Studio, but it allows you to broadcast anything to Facebook. Anything on your computer can be broadcast to Facebook. Hmm. And it would work inside of inside of Zoom. I have to look at that. Yeah, yeah, A I've used it before. Yeah. Was it ABS or OBS? OBS. OBS. It's a free broadcasting studio. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. God, there's so much new tech out there. I cannot keep up at all. All right, Alan, you are hired as senior vice president in charge of technology. Um, uh, and please put together a plan so that we can have a meeting and you can train us on that, get us going on that so that like I could broadcast that from here, for example. Um, while I'm simultaneously broadcasting on Clubhouse. So let's let's plan ahead and make sure we have that meeting so we get totally dialed in with all the tools that we need because we could be simultaneously broadcasting on Facebook Live, on YouTube, here in our own Zoom room, Zoom room and on Clubhouse. Um, and uh, I think that's the ticket. And then... Um, yeah, I think that's it. And then basically we'll, in all those broadcasts, we'll say, hey, listen, you know, every Friday we're here on Zoom and the block party, this is the place where we come together and really figure all this out for the next iteration. So every Friday, let every Friday be a step forward in our evolution, right? And we just continuously broaden, broaden, broaden and expand our reach and then get more people coming in every Friday. Let's really make this a block party. 
with breakout rooms and everything else when as appropriate. Um, but I think Clubhouse is pro will probably be the biggest net for catching uh, plant-based fish um, that for really, you know, getting a lot more people in here. Because clubhouses were, I mean, block parties were where, where the magic really happens. That's where we're face to face and we're, you know, we can really see each other and really convene. Um, but clubhouse is really sounding like perhaps the best possible feeder for getting more and more plant-based fish in here. <laughs> And on the calendar as well, of course. And hey, to encourage, yeah. and encourage them to, you know, get their own calendars up and show up too. Exactly, exactly. So the things that are on my radar to get going, and maybe we need to have a weekly meeting um, or a meeting with some frequency. It could even be monthly but a kind of a technology meeting, a platforms and technology meeting. And um, where we plan for this, plan for what we need to be building out. And also we could kind of divide and conquer, like Alan, I'm suggesting that you could kind of master the OBS studio and get ready to train us on that. So I've got OBS studio, I've got Twitter, that I need to get back on. I was on it once, but then never really followed up. Clubhouse, of course. Um, let's see here. Fa Facebook, Facebook Live for live Remember, streaming. Huh? Did, did you did you say Twitch yet? Because you were streaming on Twitch in the beginning here. Yeah, okay, let me add Twitch to the mix and then we can prioritize. Twitch. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, all right. So I think we've got it in terms of platforms. Um, at least a good starting point. And then of course, and, and the basic strategy um, here, I'll go ahead and screen share what I'm, what I'm drawing up here. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and start a new recording just to keep it separate from what we've been talking about so far. So stopping this recording in three, two, one.